Hello everyone, my name is Michael Lurie and today again what I'd like to do is help you guys go through <clears throat> how to take particular steps in understanding that it's, it's actually critical to start to move from simple sampling or manual con convention of review, audit, and procedures to ensure that you are automating as much as possible and ensuring that you have the ability to cover 100% of your transactions when applicable. Um, so again, uh, that's just myself. Uh, many of you, I'm sure, uh, know Caseware Analytics. However, just to help you give a quick overview, uh, we've been around for over 27 years. You know, over 400,000 people around the world actually wake up every morning and go to use our product on a regular basis uh, within 130 different countries and 16 different languages. This ranges from industries of audit, continuous monitoring, financial risk management technologies, where it's in healthcare, manufacturing, universities, colleges, so on and so forth, governments, as we progress. You can see there's a large list of variety of clients, of course, that, that, that we go through because at any point in time, uh, the P card, as you guys know, purchase card and expense, monitoring can be done for any single industry throughout the world, no matter the type of company. And what we want to make sure that you guys have in mind or keep in mind is how can you start to automate your monitoring capabilities as well as your resolution, right? What happens when this is not automated, okay? Is it hard to recapture money, right? So there are potential lost funds. Can you even increase compliance while improving your company behavior? All right, and it's, it's important for you to get clarity on understanding what type of misuse, abuse, or potential fraud is happening. And I remember reading the ACFE uh, report just recently, and they were saying it takes about 18 months to actually catch fraud that occurs within a P-card and T&E system. Now, after 18 months that that fraud has actually occurred, your restitution or your ability of regaining that money is next to nothing. So what if you had the capability of being able to monitor it on a daily basis, weekly or monthly basis, able to capture it as soon as possible? It's always to the company's advantage. So we put together a few case studies to help you guys see uh, what, what we're doing out there, what the different companies are starting to progress as well and how they're looking to evolve and why. Uh, first case study here is multinational, so of course it operates over 932 different centers worldwide. Um, <clears throat> they're currently using Bank of America as their P-card provider. Uh, of course, <clears throat> 16,684 uh, employees. And the current problem that they were running into was limited visibility on transactions and no automated functionality. But on top of that, one of the uh, another one of the issues they were running into was they had such a small department that was actually reviewing the card administration, so that was actually reviewing the tr transactions. It was very hard to keep up. So as they progressed, there was many reports being tracked manually. You know, they had over six thousand transactions on a daily basis, and manual remediation is a massive, massive undertaking. I'm sure there are many out there with, with spreadsheets upon Excel spreadsheets of follow-ups, questionnaires, asking for additional supporting documentation, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of, of manipulation of spreadsheets and working with uh, emails as you progress as well, right? And no cross-platform capabilities. So again, we're looking at non-related P-card transactions against the T&E ones. So you're looking at cross-correlating accounts payables with the P-card or accounts payables with t &E, right? We're looking to ensure that we can even start to bring in uh, human resources data. And the result of the first study uh, ended up being that Caseware Monitor provided an independent point of observation. So we had the ability to help bring in all of the data in one particular area across multiple platforms, multiple locations, in different currencies and languages, all through brought into as English standard, standardized, cleaned, manipulated in an appropriate fashion to ensure that everything was in good order, good standing. And once 
all of the data went through the appropriate data quality management process. We then ensure that it was able to identify any potential control breaches, fraud or money leakage that was occurring. On top of that, what they're looking, what they were able to do is gain clarity on the risks that were out there. So they were able to determine which card holders, right, had inappropriate card use or administrative access. But bit, the biggest part as well is they were able to easily gain profile understanding of each particular card holder. How are they using their cards on a regular basis? What's their average spend? Where do they tend to do that spend? Have there been any outlier activity that occurred for this particular card holder in a reasonable set of time frame? The next one was for higher education. This was one of the uh, oldest public universities around in the States. It opened their doors in 1789. They have over 13,500 uh, staff and 30,600 administrative staff. There was a total of 17 campuses, and honestly, there was no ERP system for these guys. So what we see a lot in higher education is that they're, they tend to create their own customized systems, which is, you know, to their advantage, of course, as they progress and they, they build these things internally. But what's important is to have a tool that can start to read data from the customized system, the ERP system that they've, uh, they're, they're slowly upgrading to, and any other uh, dispersed data that might be out there, right? And they were not having suitable technology to do <clears throat> appropriate reports. So one of the problems with the reporting system that they were, they were using was that it, when it was developed, you know, 10, 12 years ago, it was for simplistic needs. It was for their needs at that time. And the system has not continued to evolve how our technology has evolved in this day and age. So it was very hard to keep up and being able to identify potential issues with card use. There was also no consistency in the way the data was managed. They had problems uh, reviewing daily activity. And one of the biggest challenges that they had noticed as well was because of a, a university or college, uh, there was a very, very large variety in the types of transactions that were occurring any time of the day, week, or weekend, right? And they must understand their business to accurately detect what's normal or non-compliant activities because when they first started looking at everything, they, they, they were under the impression that, you know, any weekend transactions should not actually be authorized. And what they started realizing was, in the end, in the output, there were always cer certain researchers or particular projects that actually worked longer hours and more efficiently during the weekend than during the week due to less distractions, other classes, so on and so forth. And the results of this, of course, was that we uncovered millions in potential fraud, misuse, and abuse. Uh, we were able to help automate 100% of their card transaction review, and there was a massive amount of revenue assurance. Uh, that The resolution, or the faster resolution that was actually implied for these potential breakdowns based on the ability to tweak certain rules based on policies and procedures uh, allowed them to go down to about, uh, it, for certain activity was within 24 hours, and many, many, activities or, or cycle dates uh, were, were starting to be reviewed on a monthly basis as well. Uh, there was a reduction of, of breaches within grants and research area. So again, what this is going into is just as simple as, hey, let's take a look at purchase card transactions that are happening prior or even after the actual timeline of the grant when it's approved. So if a project is activated on February 1st, why is it January 15th, there are these particular transactions attached to this grant? Or if it ends in October and I'm receiving transactions happening in November, that's something to look into and investigate and start asking more questions. Third case study was for oil and gas, and uh, it was an international offshore drilling company. They had over 20 uh, global offices, uh, over 50 rigs out in the water, and their annual revenue was over $5 billion. 
their problems as well was that they had ten thousands <clears throat> forgive me tens of thousands of transactions reviewed manually using sampling uh, because of the variety of transactions and situations because when you're on a rig you tend to use the credit cards for a multitude of types of transactions where whether it's from paying for cable on a monthly basis or repairs or transportation so on and so forth so it was very critical to ensure that everything was appropriately categorized based on the types of cards that were out there as well as all the way down to the the employee's position title uh, and uh, are they a on a contract uh, on a rig at a certain amount of time are they on uh, are they more of an administrative role so on and so forth and when we started breaking out these types these personas so to speak of card usage it allowed us to be able to identify much more specific outliers or issues in the usage based on the persona of the actual user. So this allowed transactions to be reviewed based on certain policies for different employee categories. Again, 100% of the transactions were now able to be reviewed and sustainably started to be compared to the right policies for the right people in the right positions, which is very, very, very important. So with that, uh, we actually ended up identifying over $30 million in, in anomalies over seven different key areas. Uh, in the end, they proactively addressed and remediated these, these exceptions that were found. And it, it ended up being over $20 million in potential savings due to potential unnecessary high credit limits as well as usage. So there was also not just looking at potential fraud, misuse, and abuse but ensuring that we are validating when someone has a $50,000 credit limit, how much are they actually using of that $50,000? Does the company really need $3,000 of liability, $3 million of liability? Or can we start to reduce particular credit limits? So this is a critical point because when people are looking to expand their business or expand their card program, from say 5,000 or even 500 cards to 1,000 cards, instead of having to go to the bank and extend your liability from say 1 million to 2 million, it's critical to take the time to analyze what is the average balance that someone is holding on their credit card? What is the highest balance they've ever held on that particular credit card? And based on that information, you can start to calculate what the best suited credit limit would be for each particular card, which will then allow you to reduce the credit limits to then gain availability to add more cards without increasing your exposure. So we wanted to put together a few strategies for success right before uh, I give you the demonstration. We want to make sure that everyone takes the time to take a step back, ensure that all of your policies and procedures are up to date. And I know that everyone hears this day in and day out, but I honestly lose count how many organizations I step in to do a risk assessment workshop. And when I'm re reviewing all of the policies and procedures, they, they date back for more than two to five years. It's critical to ensure that on a yearly basis, your policies are reviewed, your procedures are reviewed, and updated accordingly. You must ensure all training education is provided for employees. So again, prior to obtaining any card, or if we start to realize a trend of particular issues coming up, we have to make sure that potential refresher education and training is provided. You have to try to automate and reduce the manual processes as much as possible, all right? And ensure that at any point in time, evolving from a simple sampling and going to 100% of your transactions being reviewed is, is critical. By doing so, you will absolutely have the ability to take control of your, 
your new program, your evolved program, by leveraging the right tools and resources, which will then in turn help you gain clear understanding of the potential risks that exist. And what's critical about going through this expansion strategy as well is taking the time to do these simple steps. Plan ahead, take the time to plan properly. Make sure that your implementation process is fully laid out. You have a dedicated project manager to help you go through this. Never forget how compliance, audit, and potential reports could help you through this process as well as you progress. And by doing so, your program expansion will be successful. So what we wanted to do was we put together a quick little demonstration here for you. So let me just get my screen here for everyone. I'm sorry, it's a little slow sewing through. You guys should be able to see it now. Okay. All right. So what we want, what we did was we put together a quick little demonstration, to help you guys understand the different personas that could be logging into a caseware monitor system, right? And what this is is basically helping you gain clarity on, as an analyst, if I were a P card analyst reviewing particular transactions, right? What would the automated system help me do? How, how would it help me? How would I then start to remediate these particular uh, issues as I progress, right? And it's important to understand that if I'm starting to review 100% of the transactions at any point in time, that means that I'm now going to have the capability of gaining an overview of all of the risks that could potentially exist within the system whether they're exceeding particular limits, splitting transactions, receipts being required that aren't met, potential segregation of duties, or a tax exemption, so on and so forth, right? So we're going to give one quick little presentation here for a high-risk personal purchases. It's always something that people tend to be able to relate to, and they know it quite well. So again, how does this information get into our monitor, you might ask, all right? So what we were able to do is, if you recall, what we spoke about quickly, we are importing data from all the multiple sources. We bring them and put them through a data quality management phase. We ensure that the data is standardized, organized, and appropriate, removing all errors. From there, it then processes through the analytics. These analytics can range, again, from all the different examples here. There is a massive amount of different analytics that could occur. Those analytics are, of course, leveraged and flexible or depending on different parameters or thresholds or card types, usage, personas as you're progressing. Once the, all of the data is run through the analytics, it starts to output your potential exceptions. So again, these are not reports that are simplistic to be reviewed. So it's not a, a, a 300 item report. It's a nine item report, a 14 item report, a three item report. Why? Because out of that regular report that you would get with 300 items, we've been able to go through and add additional detailed rules and criteria to remove all of the noise and false positives to ensure that you're reviewing the high risk information or items that we consider exceptions. So out of your regular report that you're currently pulling from your provider's tools, so on and so forth, we then go a step further and identify those three items that need to be looked at. Why? Because we're here to ensure that you're reviewing the important information, the exceptions that are critical to be investigated and acted upon. So as we can see here, if you notice, there's different states. So these are items, all right, that I'm logged in as a super user, so I have access to seeing all of the information. And I can see right now that there's different states for these transactions, for these exceptions, right? 
as they're being investigated. And these states actually stem from the automated remediation workflow. So what you can see here is a very generic workflow that we put together. All right, at any point in time, it could be configured to meet any organization's needs and remediation process. Okay, here is something very, very simplistic that we put together where at times there is some potential uh, expense coding that could be required. There's uh, putting it through under investigation if it needs to be escalated, and there's a final review and a closure. So as an analyst, I could start to investigate particular items, and these are the actions that I would have access to doing. Now again, everything is fully configurable. Everything is also permission-based. What that means is the final review item may only be a senior analyst or a manager that has access to that area. So only seniors or managers could have access to closing a particular work item. All right, so let's go back to the grid view that we were looking at before. And I can enter, again, a, a simple, quick little filter, as you can see at any point in time. And what I really found interesting about Ms. Baker, I can see right away that there's an item that's currently being escalated as well as assigned to myself. So when I open the item that's currently assigned, it allows me to see detailed information on this particular exception. So on the right side, you'll see all of the historical activity that's occurred. So you can see how long it's been in the system, who's actually touched this particular exception. Did Ms. B. Jones actually add additional info to, to these when we requested more data? Remember as well, as this system allows us to start to send what we call notifications. These notifications can stem from a SMS text, a dashboard notification, or an email notification. So as you saw, I actually just logged in through the web portal. However, I could have ha received an email that re requested me to add additional info or investigate particular items when with a simple login URL, I could have just logged in immediately through there as well. So I can see here that it's been assigned to myself, B. Jones. There is some potential money lost and some investigation that's happening. So let's take a look at the information in front of us. So Ms. Donna Baker has made a purchase at Clear Skin Spa, which was flagged due to the Merchant Category Group. The Merchant Category Group is considered a personal service, and the code Merchant Category Code actually fell under Health and Beauty Spa. We can see additional transaction details here based on what the provider is giving us and potential line item details if level three data is available as well. So I can see here that it was a body massage at this price, the quantities that were ordered. I can start to understand as well what the cardholder and manager detail informations are. So who the manager of the cardholder is as they progress, why this is important. Because when we start to put a large amount of onus on all of our managers, one trend that we always see consistently is there is so much onus put on either controllers or managers when reviewing the cardholders' transactions, ensuring that when they are doing the final approval of these transactions, that all of those managers are reviewing appropriate policies, procedures, and everything else. So what we did as well is we have this manager review process. And as you can see here, it allows us to know the amount of time that it actually takes for a manager to review a report. So it shows us that for this report, which we found an issue with a sports authority transaction, the entire report was reviewed within five minutes. We then saw a large amount of staples that was reviewed within eight minutes. And we can see that there are other alerts as well based on level three data that's happening, which again, if you recall, there was a $6,000 purchase just behind there that was also being escalated. So what we're trying to do, or actually what we succeed to do, is not only looking at 100% of the transactions, but we start to not only cross-correlate all of the data, but we're correlating as well 
all of the different exceptions that exist throughout the system. So if we're completing over 30 some different analyses and create exceptions, it's much, it's to the analyst's advantage to gain an understanding of Ms. Baker's usage and all of the potential exceptions that could exist. Because when you're seeing one at a time, I'm sure we've gone through this where the cardholder is, oh, I thought the card looked identical, oh, I apologize, it was done by mistake, so on and so forth. But with all of the information in front of me right now, it allows me to start to break down how many potential mistakes. One mistake I understand. But when we're looking at six or seven or eight different mistakes in a span of months, that's when we have to start to investigate a little bit differently. And as we know, these reoccurs tend to be put on a watch list. We want to keep an eye on these types of users as well, right? So again, here I have the ability to see all that additional information, all of it in one spot for me to be able to do my investigation appropriately. I could start to reassign the information as well if I'd like to escalate it. I could add potential comments. I could add an attachment as well if I, I've requested a particular receipts and so on and so forth as I'm going through. So another great deal for here is what we call resolution guidelines. So I have all this information. I have all this data that's brought forward to me. I'm starting to do the investigation and I don't know what to do. I'm either brand new in the department or I'm just feeling a sense of, of panic with seeing so many issues coming up with this one card holder. You have the ability to go through and take a look at the resolution guidelines, which again, you can customize or you can configure directly based on what your organization uses what documents, URLs, intranet, internal policy documents and procedures you guys have created. All of that can be entered into these resolution guidelines. So that one, we know that the resolution will then start to get done in a consistent manner. But whether you're brand new in the system or you've been in the system for eight months, you know exactly what you need to do, how you need to do it, and when. Another great point of view and persona of looking at leveraging the caseware monitor tools is as a manager, one of the biggest interests I have as well is, or, or an executive or a director, is how is the program actually performing and what's going on within that program, right? It's always intriguing to gain clarity and understanding of the usage that's happening right now. So I'll just select a quick date here for my environment. Please forgive me. And what we're looking at is we'll just take a quarter. So within Q1, what we have now is, again, interactive dashboards that can be filled with all of the data and analytics that are occurring. I can start to filter it out by locations, business unit, cost centers, time frames. And when looking at this information, it starts to, to allow me to see potential spend trends. So I'm sure with your systems, whether you're or with Bank of America, JP Morgan, First Bank, so on and so forth, this is basically what you guys are looking at, right? The number of cards that are occurring in the system and what's the spend that's happening. But when you start to add an exceptions layer, we can start to see that in week eight is where there seems to be an issue, as well as a spike in week 11. What we realized was, oh yes, in week 11 we added this new group. Okay, let's start to look at that area, that time frame, so that we can start to investigate a little further what is the exact issue happening in this area. Why are the exceptions actually spiking? And again, in week 11 you could see right here the average transaction count and the money that's happening. On the left side, we can see root cause analysis. Root cause is critical for us to start to pay attention to 
Because for every single exception, there has to be a reason. And if when we start to identify the potential root causes and why they're occurring, we can then start to report on those root causes to repair the issue from the beginning, from the source. This will allow us to make sure that these potential issues don't continue to reoccur. So instead of just simply putting a Band-Aid over and over, what we want to do is figure out why is it bleeding and how can we fix it? How can we stop that bleeding permanently? Is it a, do we have to update our policies and procedures or change the policies and procedures? Do we have to remove the cards from certain uh, departments, so on and so forth? How should we proceed? In addition, you can start to gain a better overview of your misuse. So this again starts to analyze and take a look all right, at all of the users, all of the card holders that are the top 10 spenders and abusers. So we can go by employee, by organizational unit, by MCC group on where the usage is. I could turn around and say, okay, I'd like to see top five instead. Now, if you notice, we had talked about it before. We looked at Ms. Baker, so here she is once again, right? She's one of the top spenders, and she's also one of the top persons with exceptions. But something else great that you guys are seeing is what we look at and calculate for you is repayment. So if at any point in time you start to identify exceptions, personal use, misuse, so on and so forth, and you're looking to get a repayment, we also have the ability to help calculate that immediately for you, whether it's done manually in the system or through an ERP system or a customized system, we will start to calculate that repayment for you, which is critical. You can start to look at what organizational unit is abusing as well, and are they repaying throughout? What merchant category group are the exceptions continuing to happen on? What type of actual root cause? Again, is it a personal use? Is it what we call misuse, abuse, policy violations? Where are they happening? By who? And are they being repaid? What department or organization do they belong to? What's the merchant category group as we progress again for potential repayment? And then we can go one step further, which is looking into the employee himself. So now we have the ability to start to break down usage, not only just for one, for all employees, but we can turn around and say, okay, let's take a look at Ms. Baker. We remember Baker. Here we go. Ms. Donna Baker. I'd love to start to see this person's usage. So this now allows me to gain a quick overview. Right? What, what's the top usage? Where are they actually being, where is the cards being used in a consistent fashion? Is there an awkward spike or spend in a particular area? Seems like restaurants is the biggest one. Right? What are the top five, the top ten categories that this usage is happening on? What's the spend trend look like compared to number of exceptions and impact? Right? How does that break down? What's the average threshold amounts? So single transaction limits, monthly card limits, potential repayments as well, making sure we're getting our money back, right? Because to me, if we find potential misuse or personal use and we haven't retrieved those funds, then it is indeed money lost, right? So again, we've been able to show you multiple different scenarios and situations of information, whether I'm an analyst that's reviewing the information, I'm a manager, an executive that's looking to gain an overview and start to gather more information on, on looking for key elements of outliers for usage.